Justin Randall Timberlake was born January 31, 1981, occasionally known by his initials JT. He is an American singer, songwriter, actor, and record producer. Raised in Tennessee, he appeared on the television show Star Search and the all-new Mickey Mouse Club as a child. In the late 1990s, Timberlake rose to prominence as one of the two lead vocalists and youngest member of NSYNC, which eventually became one of the best-selling boy bands of all time. Timberlake won two Grammy Awards for his R&B-focused debut solo album Justified 2002, and its single Cry Me a River. Another single from the album, Rock Your Body, was also successful. His critically acclaimed sophomore album Future Sex, Love Sounds, 2006, characterized by its diversity in music genres, debuted atop the U.S. Billboard 200 and produced the Hot 100 number one singles, Sexy Back, My Love, and What Goes Around. Comes Around. Established as a solo artist worldwide, his first two albums both exceeded sales of 10 million copies, and he continued producing records and collaborating with other artists. From 2008 through 2012, Timberlake focused on his acting career, effectively putting his music career on hiatus. He held starring roles in the films The Social Network, Bad Teacher, Friends with Benefits, and in time, Timberlake resumed his music career in 2013 with his third and fourth albums The 2020 Experience and The 2020 Experience 2 of 2, exploring neo-soul styles, partly inspired by the expansive song structures of 1960s and 1970s rock. The former became the best-selling album of the year with the largest sales week in the U.S., and spawned the top three singles, Suit and Tie, and Mirrors, while the latter produced the top ten song, Not a Bad Thing. For his live performances, including the eponymous concert tour for the albums, he began performing with his band The Tennessee Kids, composed by instrumentalists and dancers. Timberlake voiced Branch in DreamWorks Animation's Trolls, 2016, whose soundtrack includes his fifth Billboard Hot 100 chart-topping single, Can't Stop the Feeling. His fifth studio album Man of the Woods, 2018, became his fourth number one album in the U.S. Supported by the two top ten singles, Filthy, and, Say Something, it concluded 2018 as the sixth best-selling album of the year. Being one of the world's best-selling music artists, Timberlake has sold over 32 million albums and 56 million singles globally throughout his solo career. Often cited as a pop icon, Timberlake is the recipient of numerous awards and accolades, including 10 Grammy Awards, 4 Emmy Awards, 3 Brit Awards, 9 Billboard Music Awards, the Contemporary Icon Award by the Songwriters Hall of Fame, an honorary Doctor of Music degree from the Berklee College of Music, and the Michael Jackson Video Vanguard Award. According to Billboard in 2017, he is the best performing male soloist in the history of the mainstream top 40. Time named him one of the 100 most influential people in the world in 2007 and 2013. His other ventures include record label Tenman Records, fashion label William Rast, and the restaurants Destino and Southern Hospitality. Timberlake's fashion and style evolution, from boy band synchronized wardrobe days to a notable source of fashion inspiration to men all over, has been noticed by the media. As noted by a Billboard editor, since his solo career began with the 2002 release of debut album Justified, Timberlake has honed his unique sense of style, while citing Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, Jerry Lee Lewis and Frank Sinatra, as style influences, guys who were just really never trying to be that stylish, they just were that, according to American fashion designer Tom Ford, who has dressed Timberlake since 2011 and created more than 600 exclusive pieces for the 2020 Experience World World Tour, Timberlake, has a kind of effortless cool that makes classic menswear tailoring modern.
just told the Vielen audience. Dank. Guten Tag. Ach so, you have to say it again, sorry. I was... said, Vielen Dank. Yeah. Und guten Morgen, guten mm. Nachmittag. Yeah. Alles klar? <laughs> Gut. So, are the German words as all? <laughs> no. no. We, we should start the press Okay, conference. we will start. Uh, runner, runner, we will we'll, we'll see on the 7th of October here in German cinema as well. Um, so he just flew in and on promotion tour for, for the film right now. Mm -hmm. So maybe, um, for my opinion, um, first of all, the film is about decision, ego, second chances at all. So what, what else makes the film or the movie worth seeing? Uh, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I, in the midst of all of those things you described, decision, ego, second chances, there's greed, power, sex. Um, but I think it's a, you know, I think it's a sort of um, the tale of, of, of a good guy my character Richie, a good guy, trying to do the right thing in the wrong place. There's your father in the film giving you good advice, run boy, run. Is mm -hmm. there the best advice you ever given you, someone from a private life, or what is the <laughs> run. best advice? Run. <laughs> no, um, my grandfather uh, told me it's better to let people think you're stupid than to open your mouth and let them know that you're stupid. <laughs> so, I think he was trying to say, think before you speak. <laughs> in the movie said the, the house always wins, so uh, can you even understand why people are, are addicted to gambling and why, why, why is it such a big thing? Why do we need it? Um, I, I don't gamble a lot myself, so maybe I don't have a good authority to speak on that but I guess from my point of view or if I were to think about it um, I think it's just a chance that you could win yourself a lot of money <laughs> you know it's the it's it's the chance that 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 um, it could afford you a, a shortcut in life and some people win and some people lose but I, you know, the odds of winning at gambling are extremely low. But I think, I don't know, I, you know, um, I don't feel like I have a good authority to speak on it. I don't gamble a lot. I've only ever really played uh, blackjack in the casino. Oh, sorry, in the casino. Um, I played um, craps for, it took me, uh, it took me about four hours to win a certain amount of money uh, from uh, blackjack one time. This is the first time I ever went to the casino. I stayed at the blackjack table for four hours. And then when I walked away, I went to the craps table and in five minutes, I lost all the money that I won <laughs> at the blackjack table. And it's probably the best thing that ever happened to me as, as far as gambling goes, uh, because it's, you see how quickly you can, you know, the downward spiral. So I don't, I don't know, I don't gamble a lot. If you don't gamble, what is your kind of weakness or addiction? Uh, I, um, I've been told by people in my family that I'm addicted to work. <laughs> it's probably, probably fair to say. <laughs> um, I don't know, but I, I, to be honest with you, I, I, I don't know that I'm, I think I'm more addicted to the process because that's what I grew up with. Um, I enjoy making an album. I enjoy making a movie. And I think what happens after that, I don't know, I don't put a lot of pressure on myself to meet anybody's expectations other than my own. Um, I do put a lot of pressure on myself. Um, but, I, but I feel like that's something that I that I really enjoy is the process. Um, I think everything in moderation. It's a saying too much of anything is a bad thing, even if it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, I, I, I feel like what I invest in more is the actual process of 
getting to make things. I like making things. In the beginning of the movie, it said um, everybody gambles. So, in what situations do you gamble, and for what reason? I don't know. You know, I'm pretty. I would say I'm more methodical than than anything. Um, I believe in rehearsal. <laughs> Even in, even with movies, I love to rehearse. I love finding, you know, s something, something else about something else about the movie that makes it uh, more interesting. Um, whenever I play golf with my friends um, or the guys at my golf club in Lakeside, we usually end up. That's probably the only place I gamble. But it's it's inevitable. Like you, I can't. It's just the type of guys that we are at the at at this at Lakeside Golf Club. You can't play without gambling, <laughs> but it's not for a lot of money, so that's a good thing. Um, I don't know though. I'm pr pretty uh, pretty pretty methodical, I think, more than anything. Mr. Timberlake just got a lifetime achievement at the age of 32. <laughs> How does that feel for you? I mean, it's kind it's of all weird. downhill. What? <laughs> it's over. Talking about the bones, right? Yeah, it's, it's all downhill now. <laughs> I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, how do you feel about it? I mean, it's a, it's a great thing, but you're very young still. I mean, there's a lot, of, lot to come, we hope. Uh, me too. <laughs> I hope I'm not done. Um, I, uh, it's an honor. I mean, it's an honor that type of a, a award. I think that, I, I think that I have to be honest with myself about what that specific award means. I mean, I don't know that it's a lifetime achievement award. It's a video, you know, it's the Video Vanguard Award. And I think half of that is because of um, um, NSYNC and the relationship we had with MTV at the time where music videos were on, on television at their height uh, of viewership. I mean, the funny thing is the, the world watches more videos now than they ever did um, because of the internet, obviously. But, um, but I think it, it has as much to do with that, th that specific award, you know, and, and I think it has as much to do with that as, as, my, as my solo career too. Um, so it's obviously an honor to even be mentioned in the shadow of Michael Jackson. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about that. <laughs> it's truly an honor. It's truly an honor. But also too, I mean, uh, 1981, you know, um, I was born at the same time MTV was. So I grew up with MTV, and I think everyone in this, I look around this room, I think everyone else in this room mm -hmm. kind of has the same relationship with MTV that I have. And Viva, There's, of course, in Germany. And Viva, Viva. yeah. I say, I mean, yeah, and, and, and I have a different relationship with Viva than probably <laughs> Tell us more a lot of <laughs> Germans, you know, because this is where we started. Mm -hmm. This is where I started my music career with NSYNC, so. Um, it's a different thing now. I think it's a different thing now, and um, so I it felt very, I felt very um, nostalgic, in a way. Yeah. And talking about In Sync again, is there a comeback coming after the comeback on the? Uh... No, that was it. <laughs> yes or no? That Never was. Is. That okay. was it. The movie is also about living the American dream. Mm. Um, would you consider yourself living the American dream, or what's your personal American dream? Um, I, what's the, the American dream is, what is the American dream? To be rich and famous? <laughs> is that, is that have a what it is? house, have a family, something, yeah. plan a dream. <laughs> my personal dream? Well, my personal dream was to play in the NBA, so that ain't happening. Then came the Disney Club, right? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I just decided to start writing songs and singing. Um, uh, no, I don't know. I, I would say that I'm kind of living out, you know, my dreams 
in a way. Uh, I would I would say that, but I think also I I, I believe in I guess uh, I I guess in uh, sports they'd say practice counts, and in the entertainment industry they'd say rehearsal counts. I think that I think that type of thing matters. I think what we tried to touch on a little bit with Runner Runner was that the ver that that the modern version of the American dream has changed. Um, that 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 we have access to everything at the speed of light now, and and I think that that can kind of that can kind of dilute the 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 fact that the world isn't going to change without humans um, and, and our connection to each other. Um, so, so I don't know. I mean, I think when you, when you talk about, when you talk about runner runner, I think, you know, there's, if you ask the generation underneath the generation behind us, I would think that their version of the American dream is slightly different, you know, um, it's kind of um, it's kind of an all-you-can-eat buffet now, so you have to pick and choose. Uh, when, as I was growing up, especially growing up in a small town, you know, the American dream, like you said, was about like a white picket fence and a family and marriage and those types of things. So I obviously did not <laughs> was not part of that path when I was younger. Um, so, so I don't know. I don't know. It's it's probably a, it's probably a child star is the wrong person to ask that question <laughs> because I don't know that that I would have um, you know I grew up a different way you know the uh, the first time I was ever in Berlin I was 14 years old 15 years old so and it was you know it was the it was the fifth or sixth year anniversary that the Berlin Wall had come down. And for me, you know, in my travels, to come back now, what, 20, what is it, 20, how, how many years is it now? How old are you now? 32. 32. And you were 13. It's must be my mathematics. What, what are you giving me, a math <laughs> lesson? Just tell me how many years it is. <laughs> 20, 16. So to, wa so to watch, <laughs> to watch, the world change is, is uh, you know, it's a different world now. It's a different world now. But he and, for, and for the better. And for the better. Isn't it a good thing that David Hasselhoff came out with that song? <laughs> <laughs> and it's 18 years ago. <laughs> if it wasn't for that David Hasselhoff song. Also, Kino start 5.12, soweit ich informiert bin. Also, dauert noch ein bisschen. So, the movie is coming up in the middle of December here mm -hmm. in Germany. So, oh, okay. you have to come back again. Even sure. with the world tour, <laughs> sure. and I, I think there are so more more questions um, on a private line of five or seven minute interview, so you give them the time of uh, chatting close eye to eye. Sure. Um, last thing about the movie, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is one of the producers, mm -hmm. and um, I sat in the movie and I saw the ending of the film as well. And then they were written, um, we shoot it in Puerto Rico, and we build up more than 10,000 jobs. So mm. a good will as well. And otherwise, um, Leo told you something about even acting or is he a friend now? Uh, we have not spent that much time together but it's nice to know that you know someone who um, is obviously I have an immense amount of respect for is looking out for the movie as a producer so you feel like you're in pretty good hands with someone like that. Okay and what do you think I mean just uh, telling something about the Coen brothers and now about Runner Runner thumbs up for this movie as well? Oh yeah, I mean, listen, I, it's the first time that I feel like I've gotten to make a real, real thriller. Mm. Uh, and getting to work with Ben as well, you know, the work that he's done with the town and Argo and and um, how he informed so much of the movie. I mean, he was, he was amazing to have on set. Because um, I think he just wants every, everyone to be great. And and uh, as do I, and and so um, so I had a lot of fun working with him. I do it. I work with with Ben again, again mm -hmm. and know. Brett Furman as well. Yeah. yeah. 
Thank you very much. Also eine tolle Pressekonferenz und er wird wieder kommen, so we come back, not with the NSYNC, but with the, the one <laughs> no. guy. No, <laughs> that, that would be funny though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much for your time und viel thank Spaß you. mit den Interviews. Okay. Big applause. Justin Timmerich. Considered a pop icon by media outlets, his work has influenced numerous artists, including Justin Bieber, Shawn Mendes, Ollie Mers, Maroon 5, Britney Spears. Bieber and Nick Jonas have cited him as one of their role models, with the latter stating as for, not only transitioning from where he started, but also balancing acting and singing. Christian hip-hop artist Toby Mac has stated Timberlake's work inspires him, commenting, he's setting himself up to be a classic, making decisions and moving on them. That's a great place to be. In the context of male artists that achieved commercial success after leaving their boy bands, Britney Spanos from Rolling Stone wrote, Timberlake and Michael Jackson set a high bar for what could be attained by solo success in that they not only scored numerous number one hits but they also crafted the mold for what it meant to be a male pop star, while for Variety's Jeremy Blacklow the singer is the modern case study. Multiple music publications have deemed justified as the standard for post-boy band solo albums and teen pop stars seeking credibility. Billboard critics discussed in 2018 whether Timberlake is the best male pop star of the 21st century. Those in favor named his crossover appeal, career longevity, showmanship and credibility within the industry among the reasons. Throughout his solo career, Timberlake has sold over 32 million albums and 56 million singles globally, and a further 70 million records within sync, making him one of the world's best-selling music artists. Timberlake has won 10 Grammy Awards, 4 Emmy Awards, 7 American Music Awards, 3 Brit Awards, 9 Billboard Music Awards, and 11 MTV Video Music Awards. His Grammy wins include categories on the pop, dance and R&B genres, while his Emmy wins consist of two outstanding original music and lyrics and two outstanding guest actor in a comedy series. Timberlake received the Michael Jackson Video Vanguard Award at the 2013 MTV Video Music Awards, and the Innovator Award at the 2015 iHeartRadio Music Awards. Among other awards, he won the MTV Video Music Award for Video of the Year for Mirrors in 2013 and the Billboard Music Awards for Top Artist with the Top Billboard 200 Album for the 2020 Experience in 2014. Timberlake received the inaugural Decade Award at the 2016 Teen Choice Awards for his continuous achievements since the release of Future Sex, Love Sounds, 2006. In October 2015, he was inducted into the Memphis Music Hall of Fame, becoming its youngest member. On April 30, 2018, Timberlake reunited with his NSYNC bandmates to receive a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In 2019, Timberlake received a Contemporary Icon Award by the Songwriters Hall of Fame, and an Honorary Doctor of Music degree from Berklee College of Music. All four of Timberlake's studio albums have been certified platinum or better by the RIAA and have received numerous awards. Worldwide sales figures for Justified Stands at 10 million copies, Future Sex, Love Sounds at 10 million, and joint sales of the 2020 experience with Two of Two at 6 million copies. As of 2014, Timberlake has had seven songs exceed 3 million digital downloads in the United States with Sexy Back, 4.5, 4 Minutes, Dead and Gone, Suit and Tie, Mirrors, Holy Grail, and Can't Stop the Feeling. In the United States, five of Timberlake's singles have topped the Billboard Hot 100. He topped nine Billboard year-end charts for 2013, including Billboard 200 Artists and Billboard 200 Albums. For 2014, Timberlake was named Billboard Top Male Artist. Billboard published a list of greatest of all time pop songs artists in 2017, where Timberlake ranked at number 5, being the top male soloist. The magazine also ranked him 25 on their The Top 60 Male Artists of All Time list in 2018, and 64th on The Hot 100's Top Artists of All Time. In 2019, Billboard ranked him 20th on their Decade End Chart for Top Artists of the 2010s, and 74th on Top 125 Greatest of All Time Artists Chart.
So now, let's uh, get our guy out here. He is making his third Super Bowl performance. That would be a record as the most for an individual performer in the Super Bowl halftime show. He uh, has a busy week, as we all know. His uh, album drops tomorrow. We look forward to seeing that, hearing that. And it is my pleasure at this moment to bring out our star of the Super Bowl 52 halftime show with Pepsi, Justin Timberlake. How we doing? This feels official. We've got a podium and everything. Yeah. Is... You look like the commissioner up there. Hi, everybody. That is a job I do not want, so. That is good. <laughs> well, why don't we get right to it? I believe we're first question is Lee from Access. First of all, how is everyone doing? Uh, sound like y'all need a little more coffee. Like, how is everybody doing? <laughs> there we go. That's OK. Weird. I need that energy on Sunday, so. <laughs> Hi, Justin. Lee Hi. from Access here. I asked Tom Brady earlier this week who his man crush is. Do you know who he said? Uh, I heard I heard that uh, I made the list. Although I, although I was a little uh, jealous that I was so far behind uh, Edelman, Amendola, and Gronkowski. Um, what do you think of that, and how does that affect your bromance with Jimmy Fallon? Uh, <laughs> Well, I think all of you uh, know that I'm telling the truth when I say nothing could ever come between Jimmy and I. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, Tom, I actually texted Tom uh, before the uh, conference championship game and I said, I'm going to the Super Bowl, are you coming to the Super Bowl? Uh, but just to get him fired up, we have a really, uh, you know, obviously schedules are always uh, get in the way of, of uh, I guess bro time, as you would, you're referring to, but um, yeah, Tom's great. I mean, he's the greatest of all time, officially, and and so yeah. I mean, Tom's that. Tom's definitely the type of dude you'd invite over to watch the Super Bowl with you. The problem is he's always in the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> now so. that would be the ultimate special guest, wouldn't it? I have Tom Brady out there with on you. stage. On stage at the halftime show. Oh, he's busy this year. Um, <laughs> It certainly has. Also, I don't know. I mean, I mean, you know, on the Mount Rushmore of uh, quarterbacks, but I, I, I don't know if the verdict is out on his dance moves. So <laughs> he could do everything. I, yeah. Really but uh, we always talk. He about has great hair, though. He does. Have I mean, hair. great hair. Don't would, you agree? <laughs> Just, would you say he's your man crush, or do you have a different man crush? I mean, he's. On, I, I, I'd say he's on my list. The feeling is reciprocated. <laughs> If you want to make this official. <laughs> yeah. We have made it official. Sure. <laughs> now, we talk a lot about special guests at the Super Bowl. It's always a big discussion point. Who, you, who is it going to be? Can we expect, perhaps, a little NSYNC reunion? Maybe Janet? Uh, uh, well, no. <laughs> uh, no, um, to be honest, I had a ton of grand ideas about special guests. Mm -hmm. um, as you already know, we talked about it a lot. Um, yeah, there was, uh, I had, there's a whole list. I think Vegas has a lot of odds on it, I heard. Um, you know, from NSYNC to, to Jay, to uh, Chris Stapleton, to Janet. And, um, but this year, I'm just excited. My band is, it, the Tennessee Kids, the, I feel like those, they're my special guests and I'm excited this year to, uh, to, uh, to rock the stage. Um, so it's, it's, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, why don't we go to another question? I we believe we have another Justin who is with NBC <laughs> Sports. Justin Dungy. Hi, Justin from NBC Sports. I'm a big fan of your dad. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I saw your interview at the beginning of the football season when you first got elected to do the Super Bowl halftime show. You said your goal was to get Al Michaels to shake his booty. So how still, and... Still, still on the top of my list. How are you going to do that, and what song are you going to perform to get a 73-year-old to shake his booty? I don't know. <laughs> uh, you, do you have any advice? Um, you think, you think no, they can't stop the feeling may, may do it? I'm not sure. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll have to check the odds on, in Vegas on that one. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, if I can get Al to dance, I think that that would be a huge accomplishment, personal accomplishment. So I don't know. I, I, I think the odds are good that I may have a little can't stop the feeling in the show. Well, that's all I'm giving away. I'm not giving away anything else. So don't even try it. Let's go to AJ from Extra. What's up, Justin? How you doing? I'm good, sir. How are you? I'm good. First of all, happy belated birthday. Thank you. It was yesterday. Y'all want to help me? Happy birthday. Oh, y'all can do better. Happy birthday. Hey. This is very nice. Happy birthday, dear Justin. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. How'd you celebrate? That was, uh, you get a little nervous when somebody's watching you sing, huh? <laughs> yeah, it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> Try 130 million people. Um, uh, what did I do to celebrate? We were at rehearsals yesterday. Um, and uh, that was it. The, the, the crew, the, the field crew and, and uh, every uh, producers, Ricky and, and Hamish and, and, and everybody were nice enough. They all, they tricked me. They said, we need to talk with, with you about something and brought me to the, to the middle of the field and kind of, I, then I was sort of in, in, in birthday song purgatory. And, uh, and but it was, it was so cool. Um, we actually caught it on, on tape. So it was, uh, yeah, it was very nice. And thank you guys for that song. That was, that's very nice. Thank you. Still? His mic went out, but he did ask me. Uh, I said, do you, get, do you get nerves before a big show like this still? I, I mean, I think, uh, I think I'm just excited. I mean, I'm excited to be on this stage once again and, and, and at this point in my life. Um, and, and uh, you know, it's, a, it's just a great opportunity to... I, I feel so grateful every day. This may sound like some sort of pandering, but it, it's not, it's the truth. I, I feel so grateful every day to have the opportunity to like bring people joy through my favorite thing to do, which is write and perform music. And, and so to do that on such a grand stage, you know, I, it's, it's uh, you know, it, we're, we're going to take it seriously that we want everyone to have a ton of fun. So, that's my main objective with, with the halftime show. And I think you're gonna definitely meet it, and we're gonna try to get you a birthday cake. I'm sorry, let's see how fast we can make a birthday cake so we can get it out here before we're done with this. I'm so. a bigger donut fan, if you really wanna give me something. <laughs> uh, Why don't we go throwing to, that out there, I really like donuts. We'll go to Sibley from E. Hey, Justin. Um, well, I can't beat that happy birthday, AJ. Thanks a lot, okay? <laughs> But happy birthday again. Thank you. So I could do a second version. Happy birthday to you. That's a good one. Happy birthday to you. All right, I got a two-part question for you, sir. Okay. We know that you posted recently during a haircut, this album is named for your son. So everyone stop thinking it's something else like a country album. <laughs> Even though you got Chris Stapleton on there. Will we see Silas on Sunday? And since you are a child star and you've had this amazing career. I'd rather you not call me that. Oh, well, you started. You started, right? You started a as a youngster. man, woman. I mean, you started as a youngster, sir. You started as a youngster, my apologies. But you're here as a grown man. And this is the second time of a halftime show for the Super Bowl. Would you want your son to follow in your footsteps if he wanted to do that? Oh, that question. <laughs> um, uh, I, Dad, I'd rather not think about it because he's about to turn three. So, <laughs> um, but he did come to rehearsals yesterday, and um, I was shocked at how quickly he could cover a hundred yards. Um, so, you know, it runs in our family. Speed runs in our family. <laughs> I've been running routes too. I just want to throw this out there to uh, to Belichick, if uh, you know. If, if, if all of your receivers go down, I'll be ready to go. So uh, shoot me a text. So you uh, would support do, do they have injuries? I think they're all he healthy, right? So you would support if he wanted to run some routes and get in the NFL? Uh, he will never play football. Okay. Uh, no, no. I, I mean, yeah, if, it, 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 it's kind of like that thing where, where 
my main objective is that he become a great person. And if he wants to get into the arts or sports, then yeah, I mean, I, I, would, I would fully support that. I yeah. think, uh, you know, I can um, hopefully offer him some advice on what to do and what not to do. And, and uh, so, yeah, but right now, I think, uh, right now we're working on our manners. It's like, uh, it's a big deal in our house right now. There's like one thing at a time. So okay. We'll go next to Christopher from Care NBC, Minneapolis. Justin, Chris, how you doing, man? I'm good, how are you? Uh, good, good, good. I'm wondering how Minnesotans have been treating you. Where have you been around the, the Twin Cities if you've been able to go out? Mm -hmm. And what are some of your favorite hotspots so far? Uh, well, to the first part of your question, uh, Minnesotans have, uh, completely debunked the uh, rumor that us southerners thought that people from the north were not as nice as us because it's like everyone's been it's just been great I mean I wish you would turn the heat up a little bit but uh, yeah it's it's been great we um, we went to the uh, I'm being told the world famous Manny's we went to Manny's I ate my weight in steak uh, and slept for about 12 hours after that and uh, and yeah, it's been great. Um, everyone's offered me a soda. Uh, <laughs> super kind of everyone. Pop. And uh, no, I, honestly, it, uh, I'm, I'm excited to be here. It's, uh, I've, I've been here many times on tour, but this is like something else. So, uh, so I'm, ex I'm as excited as, as everyone else is to good, be here. Good deal, glad to impress, Thank thanks. Thank okay, you. we're gonna go to a special guest. We have Miss America here. Kara oh. Munn. Yes. Hello. Hi, Miss America. Hi. It's an honor to be here. Um, so as a public figure and as someone all of us look up to, I'm curious who your inspiration was. And I know during this time, it's not always easy. And so who is it that keeps you going? Uh, well, I mean, my family, I, I, I would have to say. Um, I think uh, anyone here who's a, a mother or father would probably agree with me that you probably, it's like you, uh, life before that, you know, I, I made the joke the other day that uh, my wife and I kind of look at each other when we finally get our son to bed and we have a couple of, you know, a few hours free to ourselves and we, we were like, what did we do before this? Like, did we go out? Like, did we go to dinner? And, and um, so yeah, I think now more than ever, I think my son and, 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 and my wife and, and, you know, my mom has always been a big, big grounding force in my life. And, and now, you know, to, ha to have a family and to think about how, uh, how my son will, will, will live in this world, I think that that's, um, that's probably the biggest factor. That and Tom Brady. <laughs> Tom Brady's hair, mostly. He's got great hair. Let's go to John Breen. Does he oh, have a shampoo Trump. commercial? I'm just saying. <laughs> I think you just got one. Okay. Let's go to uh, John Breen, Minnesota Star. Tri I'm with the Minneapolis Star Tribune. Justin, welcome to Minneapolis. Thank you, sir. I have to ask you the obvious Minneapolis question. What does Prince mean to you? Uh, the, in my opinion, uh, the greatest all-around musician I, I, I could think of in popular culture. I mean, he's a huge influence on me. Um, uh, the, it seems like maybe braggadocious to say, <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Uh, the, 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 the time that I got to spend around him, with him, um, talking about music and, and it just, those are memories that I'll take with me forever because he's always been such a big idol of mine. So it feels, um, it feels nice to be here. Um, the, the estate uh, that manages his, you know, um, godliness um, it, it, it is, was nice enough. We're, we're doing a listening uh, party tonight at Paisley Park. And so I'm like pinching, I, th there's like a lot of bucket list things that are happening this week for me and, and that's definitely at the top of, uh, of that list as well. Um, so I get, to, uh, I, get to, I get to come back and be on stage at the Super Bowl, but 
you know, to top it off, I get to walk the uh, hallowed sacred ground of, of Paisley Park tonight and get to play my, my new album, which is like, I, like I, that didn't even seem like a possibility to me a year ago, so. And I have, speaking of the new album, I have to ask you the line about, um, uh, I love your pink, you like my purple. Where did that line come from? Uh, that's none of your business, sir. <laughs> I think we're on to Boston. We'll go to John from Channel 7. 7 News Boston here. Hey, JT, how you doing today? I'm, I'm great. So you had a chance to spend any time with Giselle this week. Why are you trying to break up a bromance? <laughs> we well, just got this locked up. Uh, to that question, do you get to spend a lot of time with Tom at the Yellowstone Club? You guys spend a lot of time together. I know you guys are friends. Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen him there yet. Um, he probably, do, do they let him ski? I'm not sure. He, there's been some video on social media of him doing some pretty crazy things. I think, you know, jumping into a lagoon, uh, we played, like we that. played some golf together. That, that's kind of, that's kind of my, one thing that I enjoy doing a lot. And so anytime you get to, anytime you get to, you know, uh, share a time like that away from everything with somebody that I think you have a lot of true respect and admiration for how seriously he takes his craft and how great he is at, at it. Um, and, and I think I, we're probably, you know, I mean, well, I know it, you know, that we're very like-minded people. And, and so it's nice to be around somebody like that and not just, you know, hang with them, but also pick their brain on what makes them so great as well. Maybe like take a little bit of the, the Brady sauce. That's a, you guys can coin that phrase. Trademark. We're yep. going to go to another Boston right here with uh, ABC. Maria. Hi, Justin. Hi. So you didn't answer Gary's question. I'm Maria Stefanos from WCVB TV in Boston. Were you with Giselle yesterday at Starbucks? I, I was not. Ah. I would have definitely remembered that. All right, donuts. You said donuts, Boston cream. Oh, what type of donuts? Yes. You know, I, I could go for, I mean, Boston cream, I, I, I don't discriminate donuts. Okay. I'm going to say that. I'm a big fan of, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, blueberry. Love a blueberry donut. But maybe for this week it would be Boston cream, and that gets me to my next question. Oh, okay. okay. Well, sure. <laughs> so you love Tom Brady. <laughs> You love no, no, his I mean, hair. You guys told him, told me that he loves me, so. Yeah, so that's what it is. It's, no. That's the only reason why. Come on now, we love. You love I, Tom Brady. I, I, you love, just I, him love, the I love Tom Brady. There, I said it. <sighs> How did that feel? <sighs> Feels good to get okay, that off good. my I'm chest. Okay, good. I'm glad. I'm glad that makes me happy. So, is it safe to say that on Super Bowl Sunday, you'll be rooting for the Patriots? I have to go on tour in Philadelphia, woman. What are you doing? You to can me? do it. You can do it. It's okay to say it right here, just between you and I. Uh, Justin, come on. Go pack, go. <laughs> go packed. Pack. Pack. Patriots. Pa go pa pack, Patriots. Go. I'm telling Tom Brady. <laughs> We're gonna go with two more questions. We'll go to uh, Inez here on the right. Hi, Inez Hines from TV Azteca, Mexico. What was your inspiration to design the halftime show? What was my inspiration? Yes. So I got this phone call, right? Okay. <laughs> and they were like, would you come and do the halftime show? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and then <laughs> when, you, when you say yes and you realize that you are going to be part again for a Super Bowl, what do you think about the idea to be the, the greatest show that you have ever done? Um, yeah, I, th I think that's, you know, I, 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 without giving too much away, um, we're doing a few things with this halftime show that they've never quite done before. Okay. So um, I'm excited to do that. I always like to, you know, um, I always like to, to, to push to be able to, to, to do something like that. Um, but also too, I think the, 
on a more serious note, uh, I think thinking about, you know, it's a moment where you have the opportunity to bring so many people together uh, through what I think is the greatest art form, which is music. And, and so that has been sort of the ethos of inspiration behind putting the set list together and, you know, managing how, uh, the, you know, the visuals and, and how it would all sort of, sort of come together. So, and, you know, I like to make dance music, so <laughs> I think you, you know, yeah. I hope everyone's dancing. That's, that's great. Sounds great. Thank you. I think that's like the greatest thing anyone could do to express joy. I don't want to sound like uh, Kevin Bacon in Footloose, but... <laughs> and they danced. I think he was like at a podium too and he did that, right? He like pulled out the Bible and it got weird. Um, so I won't do that, but yeah. No, well, well put. There is a lot of acrimony in the world right now. I think on Sunday you're going to bring everyone together. Uh, to that end, let's go for our last question to Tencent with China. Hi, Justin. Uh, we are Tencent China. You know they ha you have a crazy fan base back in China, right? Great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this is our third year covering NFL Super Bowl. And uh, there's also a uh, Chinese famous singer, Chris Wu, coming over to the Super Bowl live. Uh, first time ever. Um, what do you think of uh, the NFL's rapid growing and development back in China? Well, I think it's, I mean, it's, it's a, I mean, it, 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 it's a great game. And to see how it, to see also too how it, it's, it's moving its way across, you know, the other pond, I mean, it's, uh, I think it's great. I think it's great. You asked me like, what do I think about the game moving its way into China? Uh, the, Is that, the, sorry, the NFL's rapid growing back in China. Oh, a like lot the, of fan base are oh, growing up. Yep. I think it's great. I think it's great. I'm sure the NFL is very excited about the merchandising uh, angle of that too. <laughs> <laughs> and to that I don't want to speak for you guys, but thank that's you, right. To that end, we do want to thank you for being here. On behalf of the National Football League, it's my honor to present you with the game ball. Oh, wow. Yeah. You want to thank you. This right here? There we go. I got a game ball. I'll show y'all know this is a real thing. There it is, the first pass of the Super Bowl. And he even threw it back. Very nice. So, Justin, we do thank you. Really appreciate it. Can't wait to see you for the Pepsi Super Bowl halftime show on Sunday. And we also look forward to Man of the Woods coming out in a couple hours. Let's do it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys.